Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Now uh, for about 10 of you this might feel like deja vu because it kind of is. I had already uploaded this video before and I just did not like how it turned out because I was very rushed and I tried to cover too many topics at one time and it was just kind of all over the place. So now I am back to redo it so that I actually have something cohesive. So, yeah, thank you to the 10 people who have watched it already. The reason that I took it down is because I could do better, and I knew that, po I knew that posting it. This video had been hanging over my head for almost a month, so I just slapped how I feel about James Charles and Creepshow Art into a video without really saying anything at all. I'm a writer, damn it. I know how to structure a clear video essay, and I have wanted to do this channel since I was a teen. So I need to start showing what I can do. So here it is, my video essay as a former Creepshow art fan. I don't think I'm going to talk about how I feel about James Charles pretty much at all, at least in this video. I only want to mention that I didn't draw my tripping frog thing for James Charles. I drew it last summer while I was high and just found it fitting for this palette, him turning out to be a frog after all. And it looks that way for Creepshow art or Shannon as well. And for the majority of this, have just been in complete shock that someone I admired for the past six months would do this. But after watching Pen, I'm sorry if I mispronounce, please let me know if I do. But after watching Pen Dawsey's video, I realized I really shouldn't be. She made a really great point in her video about how we tend to think of the people we admire as bad or they share the same morals as ours. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me redo that. She made a really good point on her video about how we don't tend to think of people that we admire as bad, or they share the same morals at our, as ours, at the very least. And that's definitely me to a T. The general reason I love YouTube is because I can see myself in the creators I watch, if only a little. That perceived camaraderie is really nice and was especially needed during the last year. That's what I felt when I watched Shannon's video. I thought she was a dorky artist like me, but loved cheese mate a little too much. And from the get, there were a few things that I didn't agree with her on. I pushed it aside because she wasn't afraid to get real and said fuck more times than necessary because, you know, she's quirky like that. I really liked her videos where she talked about art, but looking back, I don't remember many non-salacious art critiques either. I stayed because I loved her art style and thought overall she was a good person, if a tad blunt and harsh with some things. I didn't realize at the time, but looking back, I liked Shannon because she was, in essence, a real Regina George, which, yes, people like that exist, but it's always a shock because, let's remember, Regina's defining quality is just how fake she is. Being fake really isn't that hard, just ask any retail worker. Don't all like us. <laughs> the love bombing, self deprecation, shitty statements masked as humor. Yes, they are clear as day with my hindsight glasses on. I was losing interest in Creepshow a little before everything blew up, but I still watched her videos. I even loved the one she did on Thumen. So overall, I did have a good opinion of Creepshow art when everything went down. The one thing I always had a problem with was how quick she was with defending her friends. Now, there's nothing wrong with defending your friend, but there is a way to do it, especially if you're an adult. I know what it's like to get emotional on behalf of someone you love, respect, or even admire. But I also know that you need to have all your facts straight before you go out into the ether, virtual guns ablazing. And this was the first time I realized there was a true disturbance in the force. Because after reading Creepshow's community post, was recommended Hello Leash's video and was curious. I watched it and most of it was about Gabby Hanna and her bullshit. But what I was surprised to learn was not only were Creepshow Art and Gabby that Shannon actually had the audacity to call this woman she didn't even know low-key garbage. I think Hello Leash took it a lot better than I would have, which is why I don't have a Twitter. It would reinforce my dickish tendencies. But I'm not proud as I am to admit it. I'm a reactor by nature, and if I don't catch myself, I can be a downright bitch. And I don't know why I said but it's just a typo. Sorry, I'm reading from a script. <laughs> Back to the subject. 
So, yeah, I heard that and was like, what the fuck? But a part of me wasn't surprised because she kind of does have that personality like, well, I don't really care. All I see is that you're messing with my friend or I think you're messing with my friend. I'm just going to say something. Consequences be damned because I am the white knight here to save you. And um, that kind of always annoyed me, even when I was a fan, because you don't need to rescue someone that pays their own bills. Just <laughs> but yeah, I still support a creep show art at this point. Thinking she might apologize for what she said, but it really didn't last long. And soon more stuff came out and it just snowballed out of control from there. A strong opinion on lolcal.com and on lolcal.com and their almost entrapment esque terms of service. The site is a toxic cesspool by design. But what I find interesting is that while they invite you to be the worst possible versions of yourself, you will revoke your non status if you break the rules. I have mixed feelings about this because the string of events made Emily Artful feel strong enough to share her story. The fact that they somehow take this white knight stance, though, calling Shannon out is very funny to me because it may not have even happened had she not doxxed her sister and I just think I I don't know I just think that it's funny that um on the post in the website with all of the alleged statements that Shannon made her sister's twitter is still accessible at least when I went on the website which was not recent I will admit that but I just, I found that really funny, and I mean, why does that link need to be working to prove your point, you know? Because it seems, it really does seem like Shannon's guilty. I, like everybody else, have that opinion. It's just a little too, it's it's a little too much like a Lego coming together. It, it, all the parts seem to fit, you know? But whether or not I agree... With the terms and conditions with LolCal, or even just like the whole idea of trolling people online, Shannon did allegedly agree to them. So yeah, neither site nor person is exactly commendable. And speaking of Emily Artful, I waited to watch her video for a while because I was skeptical. I wasn't ready to hear more things about my, at the time, favorite art creator. I personally love Omnia's take on all of this because she was close-ish with Shannon, was far enough away from the situation to look at it from an unbiased perspective. So I waited to see what Omnia had to say about Emily Artful's video. Yeah, what I low-key expected, everything kind of seemed legit. Then I watched Emily Artful's video and whew, I got pissed. And I don't know what grinds my gears more about this situation. Choosing to be homeless is weird, um, especially because I have um, so close many times in my life to being homeless. Sometimes hard work just doesn't pay off and it's scary whenever you don't know if you're going to be living in your home next month or not. So to choose to be homeless irritates the absolute fuck out of me. But yeah, that's kind of like stupid. It's like, oh my god, that's so stupid. Um, stalking is worse though. And pretty much everything about Shannon's husband, <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? Really? Um, the whole thing makes me sick. And while I didn't go into victim-blaming territory, I wasn't even willing to hear the victim out at first. And that was just as harmful. So, from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry to Emily for that. You don't know me. I could have kept this to myself. But it is important to admit when we are wrong. I was wrong. Creepshow inspired me to make this video in the first place. <laughs> I laugh every time I read that because God, the irony um, is not lost on me. It's really not. But I had a lot to learn from this whole thing as well. And I did find some good creators through Creepshow. I found Tamini and I found Thuman. I'm pretty sure I found some other ones, but I am very tired. It is 12.35 as I'm recording this last minute. Um... So yeah, but I did have a lot to take away, such as you can think you have a good sense of judgment and maybe most of the time that you do. I like to think that I have a very good sense of judgment. Um, some people will still trick you, obviously, and that shouldn't reflect negatively on you because you don't know what you don't know. 
And sometimes a person's true intentions are not always apparent. Also, don't put people on a pedestal because they will inevitably fall off or at the very least trip. In a way, I'm grateful to see these character flaws in myself so that I could find ways to not let them influence my emotions. I, like a lot of people, have been disillusioned with influencers recently. It gradually started to happen as I was nearing the end of my employment with Sephora. The beauty community is fucking exhausting and has pretty much escalated from there. I tend to gravitate more towards YouTubers, like actual YouTubers, the YouTubers that I watch, well, not the actual YouTubers that I watched whenever YouTube started. It's starting to kind of come full circle or starting to kind of feel that way. And I... I just, yeah, I, I totally understand, and I just think that um, crypto art is a very good example of getting sucked in by an influencer. I seriously thought I was done with the whole influencer lifestyle. Turns out I'm not. So, or it wasn't. At least now I know to look. I'm, I'm rambling. Okay. So, yeah. Um, don't like fake people. And the fact that I am pursuing a career that shares a platform with some of the shiniest plastics is something I find humorous. Now, but I now know I need to approach this with caution. And with that all being said, that is the end of this video. I hope you like this final, final version of my speed painting of my tricky frog king. And let me know what you think down below. Until my next video. Oh, uh oh, one one more thing. I um, <laughs> this is kind of my opinion on this. A lot of people are saying that creep show arts career is over, and yeah, I'd probably be inclined to agree with that. Um, I think that her career is over as creep show art, but I do genuinely think that anybody is capable of change. Um, you have to be willing to change. You have to be willing to accept what you did was wrong, accept consequences of it, and just start fresh. I, I honestly don't see creep show art at the iteration that it is now. Um, but it really is up to Shannon, uh, whenever she decides to come to the internet, if she decides to come to the internet, um... Yeah, I, I just wanted to see what you guys think. Is Creepshow Art's career over? I feel like a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, you dumbass, but it's still, you know, it's a fun question to ask. Is Creepshow Art's uh, career over? <laughs>